Are you on the fence? You don't know if you should rent or buy? Keep watching, I'm about to give you an important tip. With the current inflation and news of that housing bubble about to burst, it's hard to know if you should still purchase a house or continue renting a home or an apartment. Look, if you're still undecided, let me give you the pros and cons of why you should be renting or why you shouldn't be renting, and let's make an educated decision about your future. When you're purchasing a house, it takes a lot of commitment. There's a loan, there's paperwork, there's time, there's people you're dealing with and inspections. It takes years of dedication to pay off a house, a piece of land, an apartment, a condo, just any kind of property for for that matter, it takes years for you to dedicate yourself to pay off any type of property you own. And so really you're paying a hefty price for that down payment and that loan and it's a heavy commitment. So once you've decided, you better be sure that you're all for it. Now let's compare that commitment issue to renting where you have the flexibility to decide if you wanna stay or move out somewhere between six months to a two year commitment. And this kind of setup is especially helpful for professionals who move around a lot, like maybe engineers and designers or creatives like photographers. So it really depends the type of personality and the jobs you have and maybe rent is for you. Now I know of some friends that never buy a house because they're all always on the go. And some other ones that have a more stable life situation, they end up buying and then making sure that they have roots in the community that they choose. When you're the renter, you have fewer responsibilities for maintenance, which, you know, in a nutshell could be a pain in the neck for most owners. You know, traditionally, all you have to do is make sure that most things are running fine on a property when you're renting it. But if something breaks down, it's not really yours or in your control, it's the owner's job to have that fixed. That means that you have fewer things to worry about regarding payments and other maintenance charges. And you can use that money instead to save up for other essential expenses. It's kind of like dating, you're less committed, less issues, and if it doesn't work out, you can kind of leave, right? It's a difference when you've made a commitment or in a longer term relationship or marriage. Traditionally, renting is generally cheaper than buying a house, and you might think in the long run, getting a house will save you more cash. But then again, you might be the type who moves around a lot, so it doesn't make sense for you to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars for a property that you won't get to use anyways. Maybe you want to use it as a rental, which is a great option to have later. But if you're on a tight budget, job opportunities can always force you to move out. And that's when renting will be the best option for you. It's always great to have that freedom of renovating your own home and making other updates, but you can only usually do these type of things if you're the owner. Some owners allow you to maybe do this or that or change paint colors, but you have to return it back to the way it was. And if you're lucky, maybe your landlord's cool enough to let you make some changes. But most of the time, most owners won't allow you to make any changes to that particular home or apartment that you're renting. So if you want to have the fulfillment of making changes or redoing the landscaping and upgrades to your room, or your garage or your living room and if you want to make different colors then you'll probably end up taking on a loan and buying a house if you want complete autonomy and control and how where you live looks another downside of renting which is a usual problem for those who rent is that the price can increase so your rent can increase over time and usually if you're in a bullish market in real estate owners will try their best to make the best out of their rentals by making it harder and harder for people to stay in their rent while they're continuing to raise rents every year with rents almost going up 7.8 percent and as long as there is a decrease in inventory, that means that inventory is very low on the real estate purchasing side. There's not enough homes to go around. The rental market continues to increase as well. Increase in pricing and also have shortages in the amount of rental units available because people can't get the house that they want based purely on inventory. Now let's look at that. If house prices start to go down, then there's less people that are going to be renting. So you wanna look at all of those variables. Another scenario for renters is when landlords decide to sell their house. It's their property. They don't really need a whole bunch of permission from you. So they decide to sell. And most of that decision making process is always going to depend on who owns that particular property or house or apartment or condo or whatever you're renting right now. So even if you've been there for years and you know the landlord by the first name, you know his kids, it's still a business at the end of the day. And it's going to be hard for you to look for a place if you get notified, hey, you got to move out in X amount of days. And not all states and territories have rent control where they give you the privilege privilege of 45 or 60 days to move out and all of this other stuff. So let's say you want to stay. They can continue to use leverage and increase your rent over time, forcing you to inevitably move out. And if they want to make changes to the house that you're renting, it may not necessarily even suit your taste. So if they want to come and they're into a certain color of red and paint your house red, you can't really have a lot of say so. You can't really do anything about it unless it's strictly part of your lease. You will have to stick around and stay and it will give them reasons to continue to climb in the marketplace. Now, some people have really cool landlords. I'm not saying that that can happen every time, but it can. Also, when you need repairs, you have
have to wait for your landlord to make the calls and bring in their buddy or their plumber or this or that. If a pipe bursts or the heater goes out, you might end up working a few days without a shower or even proper heating. One of my friends didn't have heat at his house for a year because of a landlord tenant dispute that took on forever. By the way, what shouldn't take you forever is that if you're enjoying this content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and let me and this algorithm know that this video is worthy and valuable to you. And I'll continue to bring you this kind of content every single week. So also make sure that you turn on the bell notification as well. Look, with the current situation in the housing market, it's tough to make calls if you should be renting or buying a house and anyone can be a right decision. But all of these will boil down to what situation do you have in your life? Where are you? What stage are you? How much money do you have? Does renting benefit your lifestyle right now? Try to make a list of all the pros and cons that are specific to you, your family's needs and wants. And once you have that list written down, then look through it and see which ones are more important to you at that time. So should you buy or sell? It's a personal decision, but it will help you either continue to rent or buy a house. For me, I always think that buying a piece of property is beyond just the investment, but maybe it's to have stability in your family. Maybe it's to feel a sense of pride that you own something. I know that there's some gurus out there that continue to talk about don't buy a house and blah, blah, blah. But the fact of the matter is, if you decide to stay seven to 10 years, no matter what real estate cycle or bubble or burst or bear or bull you go through, you always end up on top because traditionally real estate has always climbed up. You no, know, look at where you live. Look at your circumstances and make an informed decision, not one just based on emotion, but also on logic. And I hope that helps you in making a decision if you should rent or if you should own. Go ahead and write down in the comments below what you've decided and what you think you're about to do. And if you're curious about the soaring home prices, please watch this video, Will the Housing Market Crash in 2022? This video is going to help you make your own decision to see what's coming ahead.